Okay, so in this lesson, I want to talk about using ProPresenter for video. Um, let's talk about when I think you should and when I think you shouldn't when it's time to move on to another software and give you a couple tips if you are going to use ProPresenter for video on how to do this successfully. So number one, should you use ProPresenter for video? I, it's not the best solution. And the reason it's not the best solution is it's not going to keep video and audio coming from a separate place. Let's say tracks in Ableton and a video in ProPresenter. It's not going to keep them in sync. Uh, it doesn't do what's called time code sync. Time code sync basically means when I'm at this point in the video, I'm also at this point in the audio and they're perfectly in sync. They're going to chase each other. And so they're always going to be perfectly in time. What that means is if I'm using time code is if I jump ahead, then it's going to jump ahead in the arrangement and it's also going to jump ahead in the video. And ProPresenter, when we're doing video, all we're sending is a cue to basically start and then to stop. There's no way to really start and then make sure we continually stay in sync and then stop. Let me show you what I mean. So over here in ProPresenter, I've got, uh, this is just, I did a live event, uh, uh, gosh, a week ago, live stream. We used ProPresenter to play back video and it was perfect. It was flawless, no issues whatsoever. Um, but let me show you what this looks like when, I, when I'm using Ableton with this. So what I'm gonna do is just drop in a cue for slide six, so over in Ableton. Let's go here to ProPresenter. Um, I'm not going to, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to add my playlist item and, and um, all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to say slide six. We're going to drop it right here, and we need to adjust our routing appropriately. So let's do that. Let's get this. There we go. MIDI two. Network session one. That's why we're connected right now. Okay. So slide uh, slide six. If you look over here in ProPresenter, this is the video we're going to trigger. It's drag uh, drag this onto slide six so i'm going to just go before this okay a little bit and then i'm going to jump to pro presenter okay and then it's going to trigger that video now if i stop ableton okay so if you see that that video though and pro presenter kept playing even when i stopped ableton so ableton has stopped that video and pro presenter was still playing i manually reached over and stopped that video um that's not the end of the world, but again, it's one of those situations where if you're in rehearsal, you're going to have to explain to someone, the music leader, the, the artist you're working with, the worship leader, um, you're going to have to explain to them when they said stop, why the video continues to play. That may not feel like a big deal, but one, they're not going to understand technically what's happening and they're not going to understand that technically it's not really a, a big problem because it's not going to happen during the show. It's not going to happen during the service, but what it's going to build in them is a sense of uneasiness. Um, a lack of being able to trust that the technology is going to work that you don't want to have. So a couple ways around that, you could add a cue into Ableton. Um, you could have a MIDI controller that's permanently set up to be routed to clear all, or you could communicate to the media person that's maybe sitting back there, lighting person, maybe the pro presenter next to them or whatever, that if you guys stop for any reason, hit clear all on the video, you know, during rehearsal. That's one way around that. Now, because of this limitation, because I hit a cue, right? I hit this cue, starts a video in ProPresenter, and there's no way to keep these in sync. What I don't think ProPresenter is a great use for is lyric videos. I'm not a huge fan of having a, a you know tracks in Ableton and having ProPresenter trigger a video that's going to stay perfectly in sync. Um, it's, it's not a great use of pro presenter again, because there's no way to keep things perfectly in sync. Now, if it happens to be just a video, that's like going to run between a song, that's not a huge deal. But if I'm trying to sync up, for instance, hits in the audio and visual cues on the video, there is no guarantee that those are going to be perfectly in sync. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but I could use a video like this. This is a video kind of uh, promoting, um, a sponsorship thing in the middle of a show. I'm fine using that in ProPresenter, even though it's just a single hit, if it's in between songs, right? If timing is not crucial, it just happens to be in between songs. And if it's off by a few milliseconds, it's fine because audio is also coming from ProPresenter. But here's the most important thing if you're going to do that. Let's say, for instance, over in Ableton, I have this slide cue set up uh, to work with. I want to use this song, this video in my set in between songs. What I would suggest doing is dragging, and let me find this content. Okay, so I have this content up here. This is the same video that's over loaded into ProPresenter, right? So the same video that's loaded in slide six. I'm going to load this into an Ableton session here. Okay, I'm going to start all the way at the beginning. Okay. Um, one, this is going to tell me exactly the how long this video is. It's going to tell me when it starts, when it stops, when the audio kind of starts to stop here. 
what it's going to allow me to do is figure out the exact timing of where I need to add this cue for this video to start to be in time uh, with maybe my next segment. Okay. And then what's going to allow me to do is just know where I want to place this. So for instance, I'm going to just save this and we'll call this compassion video. Okay. Cause that's what the name of this is. I'm going to open a new live set and let's say um, I happen to be uh, working with that song we were working with earlier. So let's go back here, go to that salt folder. We're working with, you keep coming after me. So I'm going to drag this song in. This is the song we're working with, I believe. So I'm going to drag this in and this is going to load into my set. It'll take just a second, which is fine. And then I'm going to go up and delete that first audio track. So everything's kind of clean. And what I want to have happen is I want, after this first song is done, uh, I want it to trigger that video, that compassion video. So I'm going to go back to my desktop, which is where that video was. I'm going to drag in this live set. It's going to load below this, which is fine. But what I want to do is kind of zoom out here. We're going to copy this. Okay. I'm going to do cut. And I'm going to move to here. Okay. Oop, let's try that again. Let's not I grab that. There we go. So now we cut. We're going to move it to right around there. Okay. Uh, and you can see I, I kind of copy this uh, maybe a little sooner than I should have, uh, but it actually may work because I want to figure out where the end of this song happens. Looks like the end of this song is here. See how long these stems are running out? I, I don't want to wait. Gosh, I mean, that's almost a whole extra minute at the end of this song. Uh, I don't want to wait that entire length uh, for this song to wrap up. So what I could do is actually nudge this over and go, okay, I'm going to have this start here. This video is going to run all the way to here. And then I want my next song to start and I could drop that, you know, for the sake of time, let's say we want song two to start here. Okay. Now what I like about this, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to actually press zero to deactivate that. And by deactivating it, that means I'm not going to ever hear the audio for that. But what I'm going to have is a consistent length of time assigned to that video. Another thing you should do, uh, and this, this is kind of out uh, beyond what this class is talking about, uh, check out our using tracks, uh, course kind of for more info on what I'm talking about when I say this, but I also want to assign a tempo to this. So, um, it doesn't matter what tempo I choose. I typically would just do like 120 for a video, but I want to assign a tempo and, uh, kind of lock this in so that, uh, the length of this video on the timeline with it playing never, ever changes. Okay. So, uh, once I get to this section, it's always going to be 120. It's going to play that video. It's going to trigger over in ProPresenter. It's going to play that video. And at the end of that, it's going to go to song two. The reason I have a tempo is I've done this before to where I dragged a video into the set and I didn't have a tempo assigned, you know, using this uh, tempo track. I, again, for more info, check out our using Ableton Live for Tracks course, which I'll link in this um, in the description for this lesson. It's going to help kind of explain what that tempo track is and why we use it. But um, I didn't have that. And so what happened is I got into that portion of the show. I triggered the start of that video, but the tempo in Ableton Live, the, the underlying grid in Ableton Live had changed. And so it triggered the end or the, the start of the next video or, or the start of the next segment, including tracks for that next segment way faster than it should have. And it cut off about the last two minutes of the video, which was not good in this particular video. So what I've learned I don't like using videos that are going to have lyric video or content that needs to be perfectly synced up during a segment, right? I don't want to try to sync up tracks in Ableton uh, that have audio with hits in a video. It's not going to be in time or it may be in time, but uh, during rehearsal, but it's going to be off during performance. Don't do that. But in this scenario, I'm perfectly fine with this kind of setup, this kind of scenario, as long as it's in between as long as I drag in that actual video file so I get an idea of the length, the actual length of it, I drag my cue in at the beginning at the exact right spot, and I assign a tempo to that. And as long as I do those things, then ProPresenter is going to be a great solution. Now, if you happen to be in a setup where um, you need to use, uh, you, you have lyric video, you have content where you need to sync hits uh, in Ableton, coming audio coming from Ableton with visual hits in a video, then I would suggest using something like a uh, pro video player or using um, a Resolum uh, arena for that. And we have courses on both of those softwares and how to control them with Ableton Live. So uh, take a look at that uh, and you'll, you'll get an idea of why those softwares are better, primarily because um, they can uh, chase LTC and stay perfectly in sync with what's happening in Ableton. 
with what's happening on the screen. Okay, so that's a look at using ProPresenter for video and kind of a sense of when we should and shouldn't, and if we do a couple pointers. Now let's talk about how we do this if we're gonna control two different ProPresenter machines, the setups we need to make uh, using Network MIDI to make that happen.